There is really no school of politics. Everybody, all the big politicians in this state wanted to be governor. They didn't become the governor. Similar if Ubarra became the governor of River State. And yet people sit down and say he's not a politician, he's not a politician. But the thing that all the politicians were looking for, he's the one who got it. Mm. So what other qualification do you want as a politician? I think the governor is very smart. I think also, and I tell you that when, when you get older, when you want to say something, you, you tell, you tell, you answer your questions with stories. I always tell people, when you want to go to war, don't allow your opponent to choose the weapons of war. Allow him to choose the time of the war. Allow him to choose the nature of the war. Mm. Allow him to choose the place of the war. Then you go and fight. If you do that, you have already lost. The governor was going into a war in which somebody had already chosen the weapons of the war, the assembly. He's holding 27. He has chosen the time of the war. You are just a new governor. You don't yet control the institutions. You don't even know your party. And he says the fight must begin now. If you go into that war, what are your chances of survival? So I think the governor was very smart, you know, and he's quite an astute politician. That's my own understanding. And I've said this long before now. If people who are close to me will remember that in the beginning, I said that for Sin to emerge as a governor, he may not be the way people think that he doesn't know anything. That may not be correct. He's very, very smart. So I think that practically he took the available option that was open to him. And let me also say this, Shedmon, it's not easy to stand before the president and challenge the president. What people are trying to do is that when the president asked me to withdraw my case, I didn't, I just said yes, sir. I went immediately, withdrew my case and went home. You know, so that's how you relate when you need help from somebody. You don't want that help from somebody and then you're arguing, you know, over everything. That's not the way to go about it. At that point, I think that what the president did was simply to ask the parties to return to status quo ante bellum. That's what we will say as lawyers. Mm -hmm. You had assembly, hold what you have. You had governor, hold what you have. You have commissioner, hold what you have. That's, in, that's in what I, the president tried to do. That's my understanding of it. And he understood that the governor, by virtue of his executive powers, was in a position to start scatter more. And the other people, by virtue of their own positioning within the system and their hold on the institutions, are also in a position to have caused great disturbance in the state. And so he took the option to restore peace. And the governor, in my opinion, was smart to embrace that option and keep his relationship with the center, which he needs. So I don't think that um, that position is in any way um, wrong as far as I'm concerned. Okay. It, the, the position of the elders right. is also their own right. They are rivers people, they are stakeholders, and they also have a right to interpret the events in the way that they feel affects the state and take what steps that they think are stakeholders to uh, protect the, the, their understanding of what the stakes are. That's not the governor's job. That's their own job. Because they say where there are elders, uh, a, a, a pregnant goat does not give birth when it is tied. It is the responsibility of the elders to go and untie the goat and tell the younger ones that this goat needs to be free to, to give birth. So, this, this which, if I may just, uh, that's, that's, that's how I see this whole thing. If I may just say, you are free to say what you want to say. That's not what I'm saying. That's what also I'm saying. I'm also free to say what I want to say. All right, so what, what, I, what, I, say. what I want to say here is this. I think that those who agreed to serve the government of River State should have served the government of River State. It doesn't matter who appointed you. It doesn't matter how you got there. But when you get there, you take an oath with our constitution on the Bible that you will serve the state. It is wrong for a state official to resign over a disagreement with an individual. That's, to me, that's, that's, that disqualifies you from public service. That's my own understanding. Now, we expect judges to be impartial. But somebody appointed the judge. So if you, you are swearing on the same oath that the judge swore on, and then when it comes to time to take a decision about the state, mm. you are not impartial. But tomorrow you expect a judge who swore the same oath, with it written in the same constitution to which you swore, to stand in front of who appointed him and say, no, you're wrong, this is right and this is wrong. That's what we expect. That's why I keep telling people that the challenge of Nigeria is a challenge of Nigerians. 
You can't set standards for other people that you yourself would not uphold. How will the country get better? If because of a, 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 I mean, to me, and I have said this at this stage, Shegun, one thing I know is that I can say what I want to say. Nobody can make me say what I don't want to say. And I don't have to be toxic in expressing my views. I think that whatever the disagreement may have been between the governor and um, the, the minister, mm. those who have taken an oath to serve with our state should, should have and should serve our state. That's, mm. what, that's what I believe. So, you know? as, as so whatever issue anybody has, mm. the, the constitution and the offices provided for in the constitution would have been enough to contain it if the people who took those oaths have stood by their oath. Mm. So you can't be overbearing when somebody is in office and he's doing what is expected of that office. Your overbearing would mean nothing. I'll give you an example. In the U.S., there's a senator who appointed a federal prosecutor, and he went to Biden and got the appointment, appointed his boy as federal prosecutor. And the reason he wanted that, that boy as federal prosecutor for that district was because he had a corrupt relationship with a businessman who was under investigation, and he wanted to stop that investigation. But that boy he appointed is the one who is now prosecuting the senator. That's how, that's how real societies work. Mm -hmm. Somebody must appoint somebody. I mean, he appointed me as secretary to government. I served River State to the best of my ability. It doesn't mean that if tomorrow he is doing something that I don't like or I think is against the interest of the state or I don't agree with, I must follow him because he appointed I will not. And that's how people should lead. That's how countries progress. Mm -hmm. So that no one individual at any point in time can become bigger than the collective. But where people now swear to the constitution but serve an individual, you destroy the collective. That's where I think the problem is. Okay. So as much as possible, like I've said before, and I will repeat here, there can only be one governor at a time. If those who are called to help the governor to serve the state genuinely serve the state, we will make progress. It doesn't matter what anybody else uh, thinks or does. It's not, it's not the government. But where people, rather than serve the state, will choose to serve an individual above the state, we can't make any progress in that kind of atmosphere. Mm. Okay. To so reach an agreement. There is nothing like the right thing or the wrong thing. It's an agreement which you have subscribed to. So if the governor decides to do that, that's his prerogative as he agreed. This is totally within his prerogative to appoint whoever he wants to appoint. Mm. But those individuals who resigned, they themselves, are they ready to go back to eat their vomit? Because you have said that you're resigning for personal reasons. You leave the service of the state. Now there's an agreement that says you can go back. Do you now go back and say, no, those personal reasons don't exist again, I'm ready? I, I, I think that, you know, for a man at a point, you must have ideals that are beyond the present. Everything can be about today. And that's what I keep telling people. You're a success, not because you succeed all the time. No matter how successful you are, you can still fail. But failure, that failure will not define you if you're a successful person. Because you learn from it, you get up, and you grow from it. But if you make a, a, a habit of failure, then you're a failure. You have to make a habit of success. And if you want to be successful, there are things in life that are beyond the immediate. There are things I won't do. It doesn't matter who tells me to do it. It doesn't matter how it is presented to me. I won't do it if I don't agree with it to a certain point. But when you do things and that rubbish your name, your integrity, your standing, even within the future, whatever benefit you get today is, 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 is transient. So that, that's, that's a question they will have to answer. Fantastic. Listen, don't, 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 don't ever mention my wife. That's Please. Not very good. I have never mentioned your wife. Yeah, for that. And I never said that I love the president more than my wife. I'm not a faggot, so right. that doesn't arise. I don't like that. But the president, uh, because of position. Mm -hmm. I didn't bargain with the president for position. The president had asked me several times, say what you want, what position do you want? And I never told him I wanted position. So if he hasn't given me position, that does not mean I cannot support him. I have been in politics for years. I held offices. Other people who were not holding positions supported me. And this young man is asking me if I'm a serious politician. I have been a, a minority leader of the House of Assembly. 
I have been a commissioner. I have been secretary to the government of River State. I have been a two-time senator. You that you are a politician, what is your own record of achievement? I started here by saying to people that if politicians all wanted to be governor. They are not governor. Seeing this governor and say he's not a politician. You, you're asking if I'm a serious politician. I have held all these offices yeah. in politics. How serious do you want me to be again? Until I'm president or minister or governor, I'm not a serious politician. So are you saying that those are the only serious politicians? So when people come on air, they should try and be be reasonable in their in their in their talking. So I didn't bargain with the president that he must give me position. And I cannot at this stage of my life base my support totally only on my own convenience. All right. That I have position or I don't have position. When I was in government, people were supporting the government who didn't have position. Mm. So that's not the issue. The issue is that if the president does what is right for the country, I can prosper. You can prosper, whether I have position or not. My supporters can prosper. They can grow with or without me having position. But even if I have position and the government is not doing what is not doing better or we should not do better, I don't think so. So I think that we are reverse people. I know who we are. I know what we are capable of, and we should come together and show the world what River State can achieve, and we can achieve a lot. Mm. Uh, to my people, the Ogoni people, I just want to encourage them. It's 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 been a very very difficult year for Ogoni. Um, there's so many things that has happened which I would not like to talk about on, on in public, but all in all, everybody knows the Ogoni story. You know, we have in so many ways been an extraordinary people. We have created extraordinary vibes in this uh, state. Even my coming out to contest uh, for the governorship of this state and the kind of um, uh, support, support that uh, people gave me is something that only the Ugonis could have done, given the level of, of um, uh, would I say the dynamics of the politics of the state and the institutional challenges that, 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 that we faced at the time. It was an extraordinary thing. And I, I thank all reverse people who stood by me. I commend them. And I want to encourage them. We didn't make it. It doesn't mean we're dead. It doesn't mean we're living politics. It doesn't mean we don't know what we are doing. It doesn't mean that I'm a failure or that we are failures. No. We had a dream of a better river state. And that dream will still be actualized. So. People should just be cheerful. I know that times are not easy. I was telling somebody today that uh, when we were young, the government didn't buy rice for anybody. And let me let me criticize Governor Similai Fubara here. He sent rice. That rice should go to more than PDP. You are the governor of River State. Your rice should be for all of us, right. Rivers people. It shouldn't be for party people alone. Right. But what I'm just saying is that for for Rivers people. Our governor should be everybody's governor. Yes, that's just my advice to him. Thank you.